It's time for Between the Headlines with me, Afshin Ratansky, here on Press TV. Joining me for a look between the headlines are Simon Tisdall, assistant editor at the London Guardian, Pat Lancaster, formerly from a Persian Gulf news agency. She's the editor of the Middle East magazine. And on the phone from Geneva, we have a United Nations spokesperson, Ramu Damodaran, who is at the historic anti-racism conference. On tonight's show, the coverage of that conference in Switzerland hasn't been so much about approaches to creating a world free of racism, but uh, rather how the world must never criticize Israeli policy, it seems. Instead of Barack Obama, meanwhile, sending someone to that conference, the United States' first black president instead went to Langley, Virginia, to reassure CIA torturers that they shall never have to face justice. Nearly 70 years after Nuremberg, Obama upheld the long since discredited defense so beloved of Nazis after Auschwitz that people were just following orders. And all that 24 hours before Holocaust Memorial Day. It was the chief prosecuting counsel at Nuremberg, General Taylor, who called the U.S. wars in Indochina a violation of Nuremberg. And one of the architects of those American wars, by coincidence, gives some advice to President Obama. We'll look at that friendly advice from Dr. Henry Kissinger. But first, do remember that you can join the debate by emailing us on bthpresstv.co.uk or texting us anytime from anywhere in the world on plus four four seven eight zero zero. 008086. Welcome uh, to all of you. If we can go first to uh, Ramu uh, Damodaran uh, at the, the UN in Geneva. Um, well, you've just uh, adopted a resolution at uh, the uh, summit. Um, describe what your feelings are about the uh, resolution and what, uh, what the main points as you see it are. I think what's most important about the outcome document is that um, quite apart from the political controversies or the degree of political accommodation that it represents among governments, is the tremendous infusion it has both from civil society and more particularly the victims or the potential victims of racism, racial discrimination, xenophobia and uh, related intolerance. Uh, it has very, very specific suggestions, and I think this is something that we should take note of. Uh, just to give, give you me an a instance, specific one. It's a, uh, well, I mean, just to give you an instance, there is one suggesting that job applications in some cases should be anonymous, so that potential employers aren't able to identify the race or ethnic background of an applicant and then decide to reject that person on the, piece, uh, on the basis of a piece of paper alone. So I think it's, it's really, as, um, as Secretary General Barnes said, the beginning of the process. It's by no means the final outcome of, of Durban, this declaration, this document, sets forth both possibilities for governments to work within their own countries in terms of national legislation and work with each other bilaterally, regionally, internationally to devise conventions and covenants which can protect people from racism and more urgently help those who already okay, well, are victims of racism. Hang on, hang on there and uh, for our audience here you can see it, there's a piece here from the independent Iranian leaders, Israeli attack triggers a walkout. Ahmadinejad condemns cruel and racist state at a UN conference. Um, it said that, uh, um, that uh, Ahmadinejad disparaged Jewish suffering. That's according to the way the independent sees it here. In the Guardian they saw it as instead of walking out UN delegates should have stayed to argue against Iran's president by Anthony Lerman. That actually is the position I guess of your, your uh, boss uh, uh, Navanatham uh, Pillay, the UN uh, Human Rights Chief. However, uh, she did say, didn't she, that um, Ahmadinejad's speech was totally objectionable. Uh, why, why did, why did uh, the UN Human Rights Chief think that? Well, I think both the uh, UN Human Rights Chief and the, and the Secretary General of the UN felt essentially two things. One, this was not the forum in which to bring in a, um, a political or security issue. And it deflected the debate from the much larger and much more vital question of racism. Because the moment you have a, a speech which is accusatory, which is divisive, and which has the potential to incite, then you alter the course of the debate. And that's not... But surely, I mean, some might say that, uh, we, you know, we're just emerging, I mean, the, the biggest war, um, uh, certainly in the headlines, was the Gaza 22-day war, and uh, Israel's um, uh, use of weapons against uh, a civilian population. So 
Israel is very much uh, to the key, uh, a key to this debate, isn't it? Uh, why should people not be able to discuss it even? No, no, I don't think anyone is against discussing it. It's only the way it's discussed, the sort of language that is used, and the fact that the manner in which it is done is really, co uh, is really intended to provoke more than to contribute to the discussion. I don't think anyone would object to a discussion which is based on a series of facts as the person who, um, who speaks feels they are, and leaves it at that. I think what, what really happened in this case is that the already fairly inflamed atmosphere, and this was really as large as... Why was it an inflamed atmosphere? atmosphere? Because so many people didn't... Well, it wasn't that many countries, I mean... No, I think it was inflamed really because, for one thing, there was a tremendous myth and distortion and misrepresentation of what the original Durban document was about. No one, I think, um, who, who was inflamed really had the time or the patience to read it and realize that there were really no objectionable references to it here I, within it. I, I, hang, hang on, and if, uh, if you can, uh, Robert Dumbledore, and I know you're very busy. Si Simon Sizzle, uh, assistant editor of The Guardian, I think uh, the words, even though, uh, of course, we're falling into the same trap in a sense by hijacking the conference, but all the headlines were not about racism. They were all about this speech. Uh, President Ahmadinejad said... Um, that uh, following World War II, they resorted to military aggression to make an entire nation homeless under the pretext of Jewish suffering, uh, which was considered outrageous. What, what do you think about um, how this conference has been covered? Well, I think Ahmadinejad hijacked the conference by turning it into a platform for his own very partial political views. I think he did the nation of Iran a disservice. I think he did the... But there was lots the, of the people UN clapping. ...a disservice, and I think he did um, his own cause a disservice, and, and that of the Palestinians. I don't think the Europeans distinguished themselves. Some of them decided to boycott beforehand. Some of them went along and then walked out. I don't think the people clapping particularly distinguish themselves because this is not supposed to be a political debate. This is supposed to be about the very serious issue of racism which many millions of people suffer around the world. And that, that subject was... So you don't think racism to is one political? Side. I think it's extremely political, but I don't think it's about one specific country. No, of course not, but presumably just after a war. But, uh, Pat Lancaster, um, obviously very, um, you know, people taking incredible uh, hard, hard lines on this. Um, Israel... Uh, as a subject of racism, perhaps we can't mention. I know South Africa was mentioned. I, and I feel that if it had been South Africa, nobody would have walked out. But I, I do believe with Israel now, it is such a, an incredibly sensitive issue that people don't want to raise it. I mean, they don't want to spoil their own party. Uh, but I, I, I do wonder if it's not okay to raise topics like this, then what, what is it all about? I mean, what, what is the UN all about if we can't have a more open debate about things like this? People aren't always going to agree, and that's a given, but to walk out seems to me kind of childish. I felt quite embarrassed when I saw those European people, you know, all with the little folders walking out. It was something, it, something childlike about it. Well, Robert Dabadan uh, from the UN, uh, that's something echoed by uh, the UN Human Rights Chief. Didn't, uh, she, didn't, she said that they uh, shouldn't have left. But uh, why do you think the subject of Israel can't be talked about or even be a centerpiece, given that there was this recent war in Gaza uh, and uh, war crimes um, apparently uh, coming up, according to what's happening in Norway? Why do you think Israel can't be a topic at a UN forum like that? No, no, first of all, I don't think anyone objected to their walking out. I think walking out is really the, uh, if you do have a difference of opinion with someone who's speaking. Well, I, I think Navi, like Navi Pillai do. said uh, it did not provide any justification for countries to walk out. No, no, no. I think what, uh, what the High Commissioner said was countries who chose to remain away from the process as a whole. That is what, um, what was considered to be... Um, incomprehensible. Well, she did say, I mean, these are in quotes uh, from the New York Times. Uh, Navi Pillai said... It did not provide any justification for countries to walk out. No, because the, 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 the fact is that when those countries walked out, it was on what they considered to be a specific provocation. And the fact that they did so en masse caused a further disruption of the meeting and further politicized it. I think what we are all on the same page about, and I think um, the, the speakers have heard so far are, that whatever the merits of this, and no one disputes the fact that these have to be debated, these have to be discussed, but is this the forum to do though? You have an entire day when the headlines of newspapers are about a particular speech and the reaction to that speech, and I don't think anyone at all really is concerned about what the conference is trying to do on racism. 
I think that's the first point. The 